There's $200 million in the vault beneath the strip. With a 32-hour window to get it out. Find the safe. This should be a simple in and out. A, B, N. It's headphones nailed! Headphones Neil here, back with my next film review, and in this case is going to be the 2021 film Army of the Dead. So this is going to be a relatively quick review, uh, mostly because I found the film to be entertaining enough, but what and what went by pretty quickly. So I wasn't really bored. I didn't want to turn it off. I wasn't too distracted by anything or anything like that. But it felt too tropey, I guess. Or I wasn't. Sh there was too much of the film where I was trying to figure out the point of it just to get to the um, climax of the film, so I'm going to spoil it all right off the bat and then um, work my way through some of the points that I found int intriguing, tropey, and things like that. So um, basically the idea behind this film is that it's evolving the idea of the zombie in that <clears throat> the zombies are <clears throat> can be created in two forms, ones with higher brain functions, kind of like um the lore like a lord zombie kind of thing and then the lower brain function zombies that we uh, have known to gotten to know over the past years so think of um dawn of the dead day of the dead the walking dead and all of those kinds of zombies so <clears throat> shambling zombies but can also run um and then the higher function ones kind of have a little bit more function to their brain activity so they can analyze their situation they communicate with the other ones like them and the ones beneath them um, and things like that. So overall, it is an idea that there's a that not all zombies are made alike. Um, so with that being said, as far as Army of the Dead goes, it essentially is a film that's setting up a sequel where this film sets up the ideas of the zombies and creates a film around a group of people who go into a um, devastated Las Vegas to um, get the blood and head of this um, superior zombie so that it, the title of the film can come into um, play so essentially they can build their own army of the dead um, but essentially what the movie turns out to be is Ocean's Eleven with zombies so we have a team of guys going into um, for the purpose that they think of to um, steal some money out of a Las Vegas vault or a casino vault but it's because but there are, one of the team members has a hidden agenda of taking back the blood of the higher function zombies and in this and then he actually turns out and it turns out he wants to take back the head of one of these zombies so that he gets there's more to work with I guess and, and more um, Basically, yeah, basically just more to work with. Um, and then that's the one thing I liked about the movie was that this particular character um, is a guy who played John Dory in Fear the Walking Dead. So he recently is no longer on that show, and but he makes an appearance here, and I actually liked his performance in both. It worked out nicely. He played kind of that um, guy with a hidden agenda. He's shady, but you don't know if you can trust him or not. It turns out you can't trust him, but he's... Essentially, still because he's working for the corporation, he know you know that he's up to something that um, he's not telling everybody. And then, as far as a couple of tropes go, um, it, it falls into a general heist trope, or it has a main heist trope as far as a team member who doesn't want to be a part of the team. Uh, sometimes it's in film history, it's because he doesn't want to, or because he's taken out by because of prior events or something like that. In this case, the team member didn't want to join the team because he's not going to deal with zombies. There's no way that they're going to make it out alive, and if no ma no amount of money is worth the risk. So they pick up on the guy who hired them's um, bodyguard. So kind of, and so basically, he becomes the unknown element on the team. And then the other trope is that we have the 
um, father-daughter relationship that had a falling out. So the daughter argues with the dad that she has to go with him because her friend's in trouble and she and she has to save him or the team has to save her friend or whatever. So in this case, a daughter wants to save her friend and she argues with the dad to go and he basically gives the same trophy response. This is um, John Batiste's character um, that she can come but she has to stick to the team, stick to the plan and all of that stuff. So um one of the so basically those kind of couple of things early on were fine just so that we could get them out of the way um and from there it was a decent enough film um, to watch um the best element of the film that i thought was though the zombie tiger so the first time we saw it, the tiger i was i got to thinking because it's a zombie movie that hopefully that wasn't um shiva from the walking dead but, and I'm sure it wasn't. It was, they explained it away as Siegfried and Roy's tiger. Um, it would have been an interesting connection if they had said, well, this is a tiger that uh, had run away from some other community um, in Georgia or something, or it was brought in from Georgia. That would have been an interesting tie in there. Um, but sad to say they didn't do that. Um, and in general, throughout the course of the film, um, John Dory's character, um, so I forgot his first name, Adilahunt, the guy from Fear of the Walking Dead. Everyone was hating on him throughout the movie, but his acting and his uh, performance overall was probably my favorite. Probably because I have the bias of his performance from Fear of the Walking Dead, but overall his character was the most intriguing out of the um, group, just because the rest of the group was basically a trope-filled group. Uh, it was a gr- trope-filled group of people. Um, then later on in the film, we have a semi Star Wars connection where we have the lady who kind of looks like the lady from Star Trek who joins engineering, but she was picked up along the way. I forgot her name, but um, in this, but she's she basically has has ability. She has she has a good engineering ability, but has been on her own for a long time. So in this case, she's the helicopter pilot, and she says, "What a hunk of junk." So I guess that's their way of getting around not saying what a piece of junk and having to pay royalties is um, Lucasfilm or whoever as far as saying that but I found that particularly funny just because it sounded so similar to me um, next up the um, role the second um, favorite role in the film I thought was the guy who played the safe cracker looks like a knockout version of Anton Yelchin the guy who plays uh, Pavel from the new the reboot of Star Trek um, so because that guy passed away, they can, of course can't get him, but if he had still been living, I think he would have been played a, been a perfect fit for this particular role just because this the guy who played the safe character here looked very much like Anton Yelchin. So just a side thought of, in my uh, point of view. So early on, I didn't really notice it that much, but going through the film and by the time we get to the safe, it just dawned on me. So one of those things that stood out quite a bit um and then later on when we get more of the um, higher function zombies in the film or higher function zombies like attacking thing people moving around fighting and all that it felt a lot or their general persona felt along the lines of hulk meets a velociraptor because they have superhuman strength like the hulk but when they communicate with each other they sound like velociraptors talking so um I don't know that they explained that very much, so it would be interesting to see if they had an explanation for that, but or maybe it was in one of in that introduction that was dark and hard to see. So I might have missed it there, but um, just an intriguing change up as far as zombies go, just because, for example, in The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead, we have them not necessarily being overpowered, but because they're slow and relentless and they're hard to kill, unless you have to stab them in the head or shoot them in the head, that they can get their power that way. So in this case, they have the ability to run, move quickly, and are basically souped up humans without as much brain function. Um, and then um, later on, when we continue to have the tiger, and we have the tiger in another big scene as far as the zombies attacking the group, um, we have the tiger back again, but he has a dire wolf level of loyalty to the queen zombie um so 
the tiger is basically trying to protect the queen as um, John Dory's character and the um, other lady are trying to the, basically the uh, mercenary lady um, who has experience of um, the um, current landscape of um, Vegas um, has a very strong loyalty to that queen and the overall animation of the tiger was very well done to the point where I actually thought that the animation of the tiger breaking John Dory's neck was very well done. I was totally not expecting that so I had to rewind that and watch that again. But overall I want to say that was probably one of the best animated um, features of the movie. Granted all the um, zombies were very well done. I liked the, the special effects and CGI and the makeup and all of that all of them. But the tiger was probably the best um, part of it, and I kind of wanted to see more of the tiger. And finally, um, as far as the end scene goes, we do have um, an Avengers 1 style ending where Tanaka... I want to say Tanaka, but they basically announced that they're going to release a nuke ahead of schedule because they want to finish out whatever's going on um, at Vegas and get the zombie threat done and over with not knowing that they're that, or regardless of if the people have made it out of um, Vegas or not because that was all a ploy for the John Dory character to get um, the head of the queen zombie so one thing that they, I didn't think they seen the show or that I didn't see that they showed was the idea that or was that John Dory had maybe let Tanaka know that he had the head or maybe there was a regular radio communication that um, or he was maybe constantly monitoring, monitoring the um, audio of the communication among the team members that once they all got out that without the head that there's no reason to keep them alive so they decided that they were finally going to um, New Vegas and get rid of the zombie threat there once and for all. Um, so in general, I want to say that the film was pretty good. I'd give it about an 85%, um, just because it was for me it was entertaining. I didn't want to turn it off. The overall plot going through to set up the team, get the um, team going together was pretty good. But it was but the first maybe third maybe the first bit of the film was kind of tropey in the team coming together, the general um, teammates that are on the team when you have Tanaka's um, bodyguard coming in to say that okay he'll take the place of the rest of, of the guy who's leaving that you know he's going to be up to something as far as John Dory goes um, and then you basically are once you get that team together you kind of know that there's going to be a random twist of something's not going to go to plan or the guy who's just in the team is going to be um, someone who's going to be there for some other reason you do have the team members calling them out as a way to bring that to the forefront but I think they didn't need to do that and they could have left that alone just so you don't think about it so much which is all which is probably also part of the problem um, so things like that early on in the film didn't really work but it all came together by the end of the film because the, the entire team um, went into it knowing that some or all of them might die so and as i'm recording this i actually just hit me that it kind of reminds me of the ending to the usual suspects where they all know that they were going gonna go into um die and that they were all even though they were all going in for in the usual suspects to um, get the dope that um, it was actually because kaiser Sozi was going in to kill the one person who knew what he looked like so in this case um, it was because John Dory was going to get the blood of the Queen Vampire so they could make an army of the dead for America's war abroad. So, I mean, that, all that, once you get into the plot of the film, you realize what's going on with the team members. Um, you have um, John Batiste's um, daughter going off to save her friend and all of that, which leads to his ultimate demise and all of that. So. By the end of the film, I actually enjoyed it, and then the only part that actually initially had me questioning the ending to the film was when the guy was on the plane and he has the bite, and you're kind of wondering what that whole scene was going to be about. You basically, they basically leave it that he, or 
you think that okay well he's losing it because he was bitten more than he, he thought but apparently it's just it was a bite that was just enough for him to have the blood of the zombies so it's basically setting up the sequel so he can get back back to Tanaka share his blood potentially be patient zero where they either cure him or be he becomes the um, leader of the um, army of the dead or something weird like that. Well, they can do any number of things if they do make a sequel but the ending actually worked out nicely as far as revealing that bite and setting up a sequel. So that's all there is for this particular review so I think I gave my grade of the film at about a B, a good eight, solid 85%. It was an um, entertaining film, it was enjoyable. I didn't want to turn it off. There were random tropes and the ending was kind of questionable but they landed the ending as well. So overall I would recommend watching the film if you are a fan of the zombie um, genre or you like a post-apocalyptic style Vegas or if you like both. Um, so if you like just a post-apocalyptic Vegas then you know, you'll want to prepare yourself for zombies. They're not you know over the top in the entirety of the film but when they're there then you do get a lot of them so um basically you're in for a good ride of a film it's well done uh, mostly because it's directed by Zack Snyder um and I was hearing some in a couple of places that it was kind of longer than it needed to be but um I don't know for me kind of weren't there worth there might have been a couple of quiet points that they could trim out but it wouldn't take out more than maybe five or ten minutes if that so um for me leaving it as is is fine and um i guess in these kinds of films you're gonna have to deal with tropes it's hard to get rid of all of them um so and i guess they they try to get kind of get around that by having uh, putting together a team that the leader knew of but still i mean it, it was okay. I mean, it didn't. By the time they resolved all those major tropes that they were that they knew could come up in the beginning of the film, so by the end of the film, you were less worried about that and more worried about what's going to happen between the team going after the money and the team go or and the guy going after the queen zombies' um, blood. So, like I said, I solid B recommend watching it if you're a fan of the Frank of. Zack Snyder or zombies or post-apocalyptic films and things like that. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning in to this particular episode, and until next time.